In Hanuji Academy, a teacher is teaching German history when all of a sudden Ira Gamagori kicks the door open. He leads the disciplinary committee who is looking to find a student who is there to hurt the academy. One student in particular looks sus as heck, he decides to drop a tear gas bomb, then runs away. However, Ira catches up and ends up yeeting his but right outside. The student puts on the one-star Goku uniform and this allows him to feel stronger. He is able to dodge Ira's whips. However, Ira is wearing a three-star Goku uniform so none of the student's attacks work on Ira. Ira punishes the student. Satsuki Kiryuan, the student body president, shows up in a grand entrance to show everyone she's the boss. The next day, a transfer student named Ryuko Matoi is on her way to the academy. A poor kid named Mataro tries to steal her wallet but accidentally takes the lemon. Mataro asks all his minions to come out to fight Ryuko. Ryuko beats everyone up and the little kids surrender. Mataro's sister Mako Mankinshoku sees this and gets mad at her brother for trying to mug someone again. The school bell rings and everyone rushes to class except for Ryuko. Ryuko finds the student from earlier being hung up for display to showcase what happens to people who don't follow the rules. Ryuko is introduced to the class and sits next to Mako. Mako says students get disciplined often at school so Ryuko should get used to it. Then she binge eats and then falls asleep. After class, Mako says Ryuko and her are now besties. She's an annoying little shit. Then all of a sudden Ira shows up and everyone is forced to bow while he walks into the crowd. Mako explains that there's a rank system in uniform. Lady Satsuki gives Goku uniforms to students ranging from 1 star to 3 star. It's all based on abilities and Satsuki is at the top of the ranking system. Ryuko isn't scared so she steps up and talks to Satsuki like she's a rank 0. Ryuko pulls out her half pair of giant scissors and says that she's looking for the other half. She thinks Satsuki has it. She lunges to fight her but Takahara steps in and beats Ryuko up. Ryuko gets up and tries to fight Takaharu. He shows off his two-star Goku uniform and says Ryuko won't be able to beat him. Ryuko definitely tries but she's unable to. Takaharu beats her to a pulp and Satsuki says to confiscate her weapon. Takaharu tries to, but Ryuko is able to retreat by stealing someone's bike. Later, Yuzu is disciplining Takaharu for letting Ryuko escape with her weapon. Apparently Ryuko has been starting fights at other high schools in the Kanto region. Nanana cute girl who is part of the disciplinary committee asks why the weapon is so important. Satsuki says the weapon is designed to fight Goku uniforms. In her burnt-down house, Ryuko looks at a picture of her and her father. She remembers part of the past where someone was yielding the other half of the big scissor weapon. She promises her father to find out who killed him. Then all of a sudden, a trap door under her opens up and she falls in. A man was watching her this entire time. Down the hole, Ryuko hears someone saying they need more. It's a sailor uniform that talks and demands Ryuko to put him on. He even tries to get a sneak peek of her mountains. Ryuko is confused because sailor uniforms don't usually talk. Somehow the sailor uniform forces Ryuko to to wear it and she transforms. Meanwhile, an announcement is made. Ryuko needs to come out of hiding or they're going to punish Mako. A teacher Ikuro demands the principal to stop the students from doing all of this but he says there's nothing he can do because Satsuki's parents are in charge of the academy so technically Satsuki is their lord. Mako is held upside down in an almost revealing position. Takahara gets them to bring out the vat of deep-fried oil. Mako says this isn't good because then people will see what her goods look like if she's dipped in oil. Mataro is in the crowd and is getting ready to save her when all of a sudden Ryuko stops him. She jumps into the air and starts kicking people. She uses her weapon to release see Mako from her straps. A bunch of men try to stop her but they fall into the oil and become deep-fried. Ryuko says Takaharu and her should fight one-on-one -on -one so they start a match. The cliché big booby hot girl steps out with a round one card. Takaharu uses his gloves to release thousands of other small boxing gloves and they're bouncing and punching Ryuko. In his special move the glove corkscrew, everyone is shocked to see Ryuko block it and revealing her costume underneath. It's a sexy looking one and Takaharu is pleased, but also upset that Ryuko is using her sexiness to distract him. He decides to strip down too but it's just his gloves to show a mega glove with lots of spikes. In round 2, Takaharu says he's going to rip her bikini into shreds. 
he throws a mega punch, but it just ends up ruining his gloves. Ryuko says her clothes are made out of steel as well so his punches won't do anything to her. Everyone watching is in shock. Mataro is especially in awe as he gazes at Ryuko's half-naked costume. Ryuko ends up using her uppercut moves to knock Takahara's teeth out. Then uses her scissor to cut out Takahara's clothes. She launches Takaharu into the air towards Satsuki. Her minions are able to block Takaharu before he hits Satsuki but a little bit of blood gets on her. Satsuki wonders where Ryuko got her outfit. Ryuko says her father gave it to her and now Ryuko demands to know who owns the other half of the blade. Half the blade was left behind by the person who killed Ryuko's dad. Satsuki confirms that she knew Ryuko's dad. All of a sudden, the sailor costume warns Ryuko that she's losing blood fast and needs to retreat. Ryuko runs away for now. Meanwhile Satsuki tells her minions to not go after her because Ryuko will be back. Ryuko has passed out and someone is in awe of her clothing. Eventually Ryuko finds a man right on top of her and he's panting really loud. Ryuko pushes him off and is furious with him. Mako passes her weapon to her and it's revealed that the fat man is Mako's dad. Ryuko apologizes for hurting him while his nose bleeds profusely. Mataro praises Ryuko for her skills but calls her a psycho for fighting with her boobs hanging out. Ryuko smacks him on the head. Mako's dad is a back alley doctor who is very proud that he's killed more patients than he's saved. His wife serves dinner but it doesn't look appetizing as worms start to wiggle in it. Their dog Guts comes in and starts eating all the food. Meanwhile, Satsuki explains how their school uniforms are special. They're used to fight and she plans on eventually overthrowing the government with it. She encourages the manufacturers of the uniforms to take care as they work because their job and contribution is important to her mission. She then talks to the tennis captain. If they win their match, then the school has control over northern Japan. She is gifted a two-star Goku uniform from Satsuki and is super grateful. Her motivation for winning the tennis match has increased. Satsuki's butler wonders why she doesn't wear a Goku uniform. Satsuki says that her sword is more than enough for her. At Mako's house, the entire family shares a bed with Ryuko. However Ryuko is unable to sleep. She looks at the sailor outfit and remembers the first time it forced itself on her. Ryuko tried so hard to remove it but she wasn't able to. The uniform says it activated its power when it drank Ryuko's blood and every time Ryuko wears the uniform, she can activate that power. The uniform says he has gaps in his memory so he doesn't have too much information. He describes the man who created him and he describes him exactly like Ryuko's dad Ishin. Ryuko starts to call the uniform Senkatsu. The next day, Mako is panicked that they're going to be late for school. Not sure why she would want to go back to a school that wanted to deep fry her. As they're going up, Mako explains that the Goku star status at the school determines where you live. Low ranks live in the slums. Now that they're in school, Mako is getting slammed with tons of tennis balls, while Mako explains that Ryuko can stay with them as long as she wants. It's Omiko, the president of the girls' tennis club. Omiko explains that Mako will have to suffer the 110 tennis ball cannon hits since Mako skipped practice. Ryuko tries to explain that Mako skipped only because she was held hostage. Girls start to serve the tennis balls toward Ryuko and she blocks them all. Before Ryuko tells Mako to leave, Mako has already dipped the F out of there. Ryuko tries to activate her sailor uniform but Senketsu doesn't respond. She's hit with hundreds of tennis balls and flies off into the sewers. Ryuko wakes up and it's Aikuro who has helped her this time. Aikuro is her homeroom teacher who tried to get the principal to help the students out. Ryuko realizes that Aikuro undressed her and she's furious. Ryuko tries to punch him but Aikuro dodges it and sends needles flying onto her back. It's anesthetic acupuncture. He then extracts some blood from Ryuko then splashes it onto the sailor outfit. The outfit begins to glow and activates. Apparently it only activates when it has Ryuko's blood on it. While Aikuro starts to explain the outfit some more, he shows off his hot bod. He says Ryuko's father made the uniform and whoever can use it has the chance to beat Satsuki. If Ryuko wants more answers from Aikuro, he demands her to beat the tennis captain to prove she's worthy. The sirens wail which mean afternoon classes are about to start. Aikuro removes Ryuko's towel like a naughty man. 
then gifts Ryuko a special pair of gloves that will make giving blood to her uniform easier. Meanwhile, the tennis girls are all practicing their shots on target practice. Yuzu compliments Omiko, who says it's all because of her tennis-specific Goku uniform. Mako is getting pummeled with a bunch of tennis balls while Omiko explains how they're purging Mako suddenly Ryuko saves Mako. Ryuko activates her uniform by releasing blood. Omiko says it looked painful and embarrassing. Then calls Ryuko a masochistic stripper. The girls all serve their tennis balls at her. However Ryuko uses her scissors to shred the balls into pieces. Yuzu says Ryuko isn't playing by the tennis rules so Ryuko loses. Mako interrupts and says Ryuko won the match because Ryuko saved her with friendship. She emphasizes that if you win with friendship, then you've won at life. Ryuko then challenges Omiko to an official tennis match. Ryuko serves it first. This is probably the sexiest tennis match I've ever seen. Omiko does a special move and it ends up throwing Ryuko across the map. Putting her in a very uncompromising but very nice pose. Ryuko is mad now, so she serves twice, but her uniform is giving her faulty serves. Senketsu says to use the scissor blade because it is the only thing strong enough to withstand the uniform's power. Now that she has a makeshift tennis racket, she is able to smack the tennis ball right into Omiko's face. This sends Omiko bouncing back into Ryuko who then uses her scissors to cut out Omiko's Goku uniform. Lady Setsuki claims that Ryuko has won the match. However, if she wants more information, they'll have to fight each other first. Senketsu says Ryuko will pass out if she doesn't beat Satsuki within two minutes. Satsuki yields the secret sword Bakuzin. A super sharp blade that can cut through anything including Ryuko's uniform. The two clash swords, but Ryuko has to retreat as she realizes that she's not strong enough yet. Mako and Ryuko leave immediately. Omiko is now being demoted out of the tennis club for her failure. This was a very hot and steamy anime. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.